Hello there, my brothers and sisters. It's Josh Backer. Welcome to another episode of the Golden Image of Church Andy is Alive. Hey, I want to talk to you about internal oppression and how it's being wielded and used to manipulate all these weirdos you see everywhere. All these BLM activists, all these Antifa activists, all the LGBTQ, um, all progressive liberals, all these open border people, all everyone and everywhere that you see is going, these people are acting contrary to self-preservation. Why? It's so weird. How do you get yourself in their mindset? Well, because it doesn't make any sense logically at all. And but it's easy to see once you understand these principles. Okay, that internal oppression is being instilled in them um, by their masters, by the suits, not them, that are telling them um, and showing them and, and indoctrinating us from I mean elementary school and below about homosexuality, porn, drugs. I mean. Everything's being done on purpose, you guys, in order to erode the moral fabric of our of each individual person on the earth so that they're easy to, ma to manipulate and control. Because when you're strong morally, it's almost impossible to control you. But when you're not, when you're weak morally, when you're completely spiritually defunct, you're easy to manipulate because you'll be triggered by fear, shame, and guilt anytime they decide to because you've just been conditioned from a child to, under, to act the way you're acting now. Okay, now the first thing you need to understand is God has made everything. There is nothing that he has not made. He's made the natural laws, the metaphysical laws. He's made everything that has happened. Everything that is existing, the way things operate, the laws of physics, the laws of thermodynamics, I mean, every little thing you want to follow, God has developed and made. So this is his creation, and he has set it up, like it or not. He gave you the Ten Commandments. I'm just going to go through them briefly. And I want to show you that if you break these things, wrath will heap upon you. And you'll feel it as the form of oppression inside yourself. It'll be iniquity or a God-shaped hole or as most commonly known as sin, which causes you to commit sins. I want you to separate sin and sins. Because everybody knows about, oh yeah, I know what sin is. It's when you do bad things. No, that's not what it means. Sin is the inadequacy you feel, the iniquity you feel, the oppression you feel in yourself that dominates every decision of your life, that causes you to do the things you hate, the thing that generates the disgusting things you do. It's called sin. So I want to show you. Um, let's just go through briefly the, the laws of God and the Ten Commandments because it will be extrapolated out in the uh, Levitical laws, which are 613 to explain these Ten Commandments, you guys. So um, bear with me here because you're going to see that these don't really mean uh, what you think they mean. We're going to kind of extrapolate a little bit out of them. Okay. So if you want to turn with me to Exodus um, 20, we'll just start right here. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, which has brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. Okay, well, that means that you're thinking that's all other religions, right? No. It means even yourself. So you understand, if you disobey these rules and you assent against them and you try to establish your own set against these rules, then you've established yourself as God. And you set up your own judgment and your own preferences over God. What does that make you? So you'll be worshiping your own images of your own understanding, which you have created to fit your sin condition. You got to understand, if you're serving your opinions or other people's opinions or the crowd's opinions and not God, there's no excuse. You will reap the wrath. And this is the biggest one right here. This one here is you do this, you do not serve God, wrath will just multiply on you. Okay, let's keep going down through the list. You shall not make thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the, is in the water under the earth. And this is, again, just you're making your own images, bowing down to the images of your imagination, which you're all doing. Everyone, I'm talking Christians, I'm talking everyone. You guys are all, because of that oppression you feel in yourself, you have to go about to establish an idea to which you can judge yourself and others by. That is idolatry, and that is lifting up your own God above God and bowing down and worshiping it. Okay? So he says, 
Um, you shall not bow yourself down to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children <clears throat> under the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And that's the truth. If you dishonor God and you teach your children to, he's saying for generations you're going to screw your family and your children. You're handing your children to the devil every day thinking you're doing something noble. Oh, let's, let's, oh, it's okay. Love is love. Oh, my, my 12 year old wants to be a transgender. Oh, and you're, you, it's like, what? You're going to have to answer to God for this. Your poor children. Anyway. He says, he shows mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. And so this is where we want to be, to bless your family and your children. You want to support and belong and, and be in God's household. You want to follow these commandments because, again, this is the system that you're in. Whether you like it or not, God established it this way. You follow his ways, you'll be blessed, and your family will be blessed, and everyone around you will be blessed. You reject his ways and go about to establish your own, you're going to be punished. Just the way it works. And it's not God punishing you. It's the system, the natural laws that are actually put in place that actually do the punishing. So, anyway, you're your own worst enemy at that point. Okay, <clears throat> so you shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. And this is talking to the religious people. This is of you that claim to know the Lord, yet you yourself have not entered the kingdom, and you prevent them that would. This is you that say that, oh, you have to believe to be saved instead of Satan. That said the same thing to Eve. That, oh, no, 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 you're not in the likeness and image of God. If you just eat of this, you will be. Which you deny Christ by telling people that they have to do something to be saved. You deny and dishonor and tread his blood on their foot. And you say that what he did was worthless. That well, we had free will all along. We could just turn to you anytime we wanted. You're, you're part of the problem. You will have wrath upon yourself. If you ever wondered why you don't have a living relationship with God, start there. Okay, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And this is the rest. It's keeping away from your works. Now, I want you guys to know the wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23, right? But everyone looks at, oh yeah, sin is death. See, sin is death. Well, no, no, no. It's the wages of sin is death. So that your works of unrighteousness, because of that sin in yourself, Anytime you employ anything, it is just death. You guys understand, you will reap death unto yourself by doing your self-righteous work, by employing anything to those first three dishonoring God. Okay. <clears throat> Remember the seventh day, but six days you shall labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord thy God, and it you shall not do any work. You, your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor the cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. So all you're trying to do is get people to stop. You're trying to get them to take their burdens off. You're trying to unwind people rather than trying to give them an image to live up to, you guys. That's why the name of my site is called The Golden Image of Churchianity is a Lie. Because what the church is teaching is to put a burden upon you. To, to, you got to change yourself, fix yourself. You got to do this, you got to do that. You got to quit jacking off. You got to quit working. You got to do... Blah, 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 blah. They, put, they put all this burden on you. Why do you think the world is completely confused? You say that there is a Savior and that you serve that Savior, yet you yourself live as though you're them. You live as like there's nothing been changed, nothing's been done. It's all by your strength and by your own power. Everyone sees your hypocrisy except you because you're indoctrinated into your religious thinking, just like they're indoctrinated into their uh, secular humanism that they've been taught. Oh, got it. Don't get me going. Okay. All right. Now... For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. For this reason the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor your father and mother, that thy days may be long among, uh, upon the land, which the Lord thy, thy God gives thee. And if you ever notice, this is in the first five commandments. So this is, this is actually part of your vertical relationship with God, is honoring your parents. Well, so, how do you do that? It's up to you. You'll see if you're honoring your parents or not. You'll know. But it's part of your relationship with God. And by breaking any of these first five, you will bring huge wrath upon yourself. Okay, now let's do your let's see your interpersonal relationships. Okay. You should not kill. Well, I've never committed murder. Well, you hate. Jesus says if you hate, you committed murder in your heart. You hate, you pillage, you judge, 
you murder daily in your own heart. To, by the measure by which you do this, you will reap wrath upon yourself. Just the way it works. Look at Antifa, BLM. Look at feminists. Look at these people. They're miserable people. Because you know the first five, they're, they don't have it all. So you know they're just already a pile of misery. But then they start adding this stuff in, and you can just see it evident. They shave their heads, make themselves look all butch, lose all femininity to the where they're dishonoring women themselves. They, they call themselves feminists, but they don't even empower women to be feminine, which is what women are. Uh, anyway, just drives you crazy because you're looking at them going, this doesn't make any sense. Why are you trying to be a man if you're trying to hate, if you hate men so much, why are you trying to look and act like a man? It drives me crazy to me. Anyway. You shall not commit adultery. And everybody's like, I'll oh, see, well, I don't cheat on my wife. I'm a good person. Well, the thing is, is adultery is anything that God is, says is against uh, his sexual standard, which is one man, one woman. Married, as a matter of fact. So if you're a homosexual, you're practicing homosexual things, LGBT, whatever, you're effeminate, a man that's dressing like a woman or a woman dressing like a man or you're transgender, by the measure by which you do this and embrace this, you will heap wrath upon yourself. And these people have massive rates of, of suicide and drug use. And, and I mean, there's just lots, lots of problems there. And it's clinically proven, so don't, must, don't shoot the messenger here. Okay, <clears throat> you should not steal, okay? Welfare fraud, taking from others to give to others. This, this nation is being, is a welfare state right now. It's living on the fact that it steals from some to give to others that are not willing to work. This is stealing. Okay. Also, if you use somebody like, again, LGBTQ or homosexual or even uh, heterosexual people that use people for sex, you're stealing from them. Transactional. You're, you're stealing from them. And they're, they're, you know, like there's the takers in a relationship and the givers. Well, you steal all day long. The codependent relationships is all theft. I mean, the way you look at it, everywhere you look at it, you're stealing from others just to make yourselves feel better. Oh, I want reparations. I want this. I want that. It's all about me. Oh, they're looting and pillaging. Oh, there's more wrath heaped upon you. Um, you should not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Look at all this stuff with like Flynn. Look at all stuff against Trump, President Trump. Look at all these liars everywhere. All these false accusations from women claiming that they've been uh, molested. I mean, false, 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 everywhere. That's all we see is these liars everywhere trying to, to you know, besmirch other people and their political opponents through lying, straight up lying, and embracing it and seeing nothing wrong with it is just part of the one of their tactics. You know, you're, you've got wrath upon you to the uttermost. Like Nancy Pelosi, like talking like she prays to God. She doesn't pray to God. It's Satan she's praying to. <clears throat> okay, and it says, you shall not cover your neighbor's house. You shall not cover your neighbor's wife. That's why you know that when it's talking about adultery, it's not talking about just the wife or the husband or whatever you're trying to take. Adultery is anything that you do that is outside God's prescribed um, uh, manner of sex, anal sex. I mean, anything you're doing that is against God's commandments, um, Sexually, I mean, you're having sex out of marriage. If you're having multiple uh, sexual partners, if you're doing any of this stuff, you are reaping wrath to yourself. Okay? So, you shall not cover his wife, his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Okay. So, when we look today at people, and I'm going to tell you, um, until that iniquity problem is filled inside of somebody's heart, they can't but lust. They can't but be perverted. They can't but serve them on their own selves because they can't rest. Because all they feel is that oppression in themselves and they serve it all day and night. It's called the dominion of sin, which causes them to be the man of sin, which is a false person, not what they were created to be. They've established their idea of righteousness. And some people, it's a colored hair spiked all up with all kinds of piercings with, you know, and fake tits on a man or whatever. But these ideas of their own righteousness are what are killing them. So they're being easily manipulated and they're filled with all this wrath and indignation. They're filled with all this oppression. I mean, everything is there. So 
they won't acknowledge God because of their pride, because of their ego, because if they did so, they'd have to admit everything in their life is a lie. Everything they fought for and championed was evil. They won't do it. You guys, you gotta understand, this is ridiculous and disgusting. But these people are sowing this stuff into you and your children, so you gotta be careful not to let that same hate that consumes them, don't let it consume you and control you. Because it's easy, trust me, I'm a man. Trust me, I want to go out there and, I mean, bump some heads. Trust me, I wanna go out there and just whoop their asses. Which, you know, it might, might have to come to that at some point. I don't want it to, I'm really, this is the part where we're really, we don't want to do it. But, and the thing is, we gotta keep in mind, these people are just stupid. I mean, they're evil and you gotta protect yourself. If they get near you, shoot their asses. But what I'm saying is, you gotta keep in mind, these people are still somebody's child. I mean, there's somebody loves these kids and they were just twisted and they were lied to. Jesus understood this when, we, when he went to the cross. And he says, forgive them for they know not what they do because he had compassion on, the, on us because he knew that we'd been lied to, that Satan was a way better deceiver as we are, than we are able to find out the truth. You guys gotta understand this. The people who are in charge, like their Nancy Pelosi's, their Chuck Schumer's, their uh, Al Sharpton's, their Jesse Jackson's, these uh, race-baiting, uh, hate-inducing, wicked people. I mean, they, they're sowing this into these people to make them angry at us. And we're innocent. We haven't done anything to these people, but because they won't acknowledge their own sin, they won't acknowledge God, they, they won't only, they'll only do what their masters have told them because they've been trained to be triggered at any little thing. Oh, racist, triggered. Uh, oh, xenophobe, triggered. Homophobe, triggered. Uh, you know, sexist, triggered. Misogynist, triggered. As soon as they hear that word, as soon as that level, they've just been they've been brought up through all their education, through everything they do, and the further they've gone through college, the more they are indoctrinated. They've only been educated to one side of the story. They have not seen the other side. They don't even have any idea of the other side or that there is another other side because they've been so sequestered by their people, by their own leaders, so that they won't seek out the truth. They just get around a bunch of people that agree with them and then they just stay there because that's what misery does. It loves company. But we're innocent compared, we haven't done, done anything to them. I don't care. You own 1.4% of people ever owned any slaves. And some of the first slave owners in America were black. And you forget all the black people, they, they sold them to those people. They forget about all the people, the white people that died to save them, to get them free, all the white Christian men that went to fight and to free them from their slavery. You know, you gotta understand, yet they hate us. And look at, look at the Democrats, what they do to black people. They kill their children by the millions. They're incarcerated in numbers greater than anywhere from Democrat-controlled cities. They're in the slums in Democrat cities. They're in, all this violence is in Democrat cities. Everything that is oppressing them is from Democrats. Every single thing. Oh no, but I'm white and I'm racist. I can't tell them that. Oh no, your Jesus is white. You're not a Christian enough. You're not a black Christian. <laughs> it's like, well, you never were a Christian in the first place, were you? I understand. I look at these, these poor, I mean, gay little turds running around over here where we're at, you know, and I'm going, what's wrong with you? Do you realize, I mean, for me, I could never let another man dominate me like that. It just is disgusting to me. If I ever did get dominated like that, I would kill him. I mean, it would just be a matter of time. It, I don't, it's just weird to me how people can just be, let themselves be so depraved and so just put down and so just, uh, and love it, you know what I mean? And just be destroyed internally and have their entire spirit destroyed and broken and to where they're completely employed to nothing but evil seven days a week all the time. Employed to it, and not only that, not only that, defending and championing their cause. 
all the while heaping more and more wrath and having to do more and more drugs and having to be more perverted and having to be more just to even exist or even feel anything anymore because they don't have any feeling left. It's all been seared. So you look at these people and you realize, and I gotta go back because I have my own children now. And I'm looking at these people and I'm going, at some point these were children. These were little kids, innocent, running around like my kids. Their parents had such high hopes for them and, and wanted to love them and, and cherish them. They wanted to see them succeed in life. And then they become these Antifa BLM bitches. And, and you, as a parent, you gotta look at that and see, my, I handed my children over to indoctrination and control of the enemy. I mean, honestly, if, if I saw my child being used like that and being abused by lesbians and men just for sex to be utilized, that would be the worst thing I could ever see in my life to happen to my daughter. I mean, there's worse things, but still, I don't want that ever to happen to her. I want to serve the Lord so that my children have a chance, you guys. Because I can't hold on to her forever. All I can do is equip her with the knowledge that she is adequate because the Lord is adequate. That there is nothing that she, that, and I want to keep her from being controlled and manipulated and be made into a mob. You know, don't you guys see that with your children? Your, your, your wives? I mean, you got to understand, the Lord's way is right. Anything outside of that way is destruction. And I'm going to tell you, when I was young, I was just like these Antifa kids. Literally was. I was just total anarchist. I was, you know, actually I could kick some ass though. I used to go to bars and beat the shit out of people. I used to do, I mean, I used to fight all the time. I was liberal to the bone. I, was, I supported abortion. I even knew abortion was murder. There's no way around it. it. Abortion is murder. It's just whether or not you think that's okay for convenience, okay? I used to believe this stuff. I used to believe that, oh, it's okay to be gay. You know, whatever was a big deal. You know, they're, they're you know, they're, I mean, they're people too. Love is love. I mean, I thought it was gross. I'd have never done it. But, you know, some people, that's their thing, you know, and I used to think that. And so I look at feminists and I go, well, it's not my cup of tea, you know, but who are they really hurting, you know, besides themselves? And you start looking at all these, and I've never really liked black people, to be honest. They've just always been whiny crybabies. They've always been, anyway. And, you know, that's my own thing. Um, anyway, but going down through the list, um, you don't realize until you actually are free from that. I mean, I did drugs to the utmost. I, I, I used and abused women, um, or actually was a house probably more used and abused by women. Um, I mean, anyway, there, I was just an evil, evil person, and I didn't want to live anymore when I was young. I wanted to die. I didn't meet the Lord until I was 28, and I was a fool, just like these people. But then once the Lord came in and turned my life around, and now I see the blessing I have, to where I see the white picket fence dream is the American dream. It is the pinnacle of existence is to have your own children and your wife. You guys gotta understand, what they've robbed you of is your peace and your joy and your hope. They've robbed you of anything worth living for so that you would be soldiers for them with nothing to lose. They've robbed everything from you. They've robbed your Jesus from you, which is the most amazing person on the earth that has ever been as Jesus. And if you knew Jesus, you would it would change you in a second. It changed me in one second to know him. And then my life is so blessed now, I have no more anger, no more guilt, no more frustration, no more self-loathing, nothing, it's all gone. I'm at peace, I have beautiful children, I, I can enjoy my life, I have peace every day. I have a good job, I run a large crew of men, you know what I mean? God has put me in front of, I mean, from where I was to where I am now is night and day. And anyone that knows me, anyone that knows me um, can see the difference. They know that I am completely a new man. And it's not that God changed me into another me. He did as he took off all the things that were caging me and burdening me. And he did it one second. All I had to do. And I mean, I don't even, it's not even this, because he was drawing me the whole way and I wanted to, because you were made to be with God. You were made to be in fellowship with him. You won't be happy unless you are in fellowship with God. You won't. He made the rules. It's just the way it is. 
you won't enjoy your life. You won't enjoy anything until you're close to the Lord. And that's the way he designed you, and that's the way he built you, and he is the maker. Okay? But if you do, and you, sub you would submit yourself to him, that oppression will go away. Joy and peace will fill you, because you'll be doing what you were made to be. So you can have your pride, you can have your arrogance, you can have it, and then you suffer for it your whole life, or you just lay down and just kind of come in line with the one that loves you, the one that made you, the one that created you for a purpose, that you'll, you'll never find that purpose. You'll never find your peace in this earth until you understand who you really are in him. But that's the only way that you can come out from underneath that oppression so you won't be used anymore. You need to get rid of that shame and guilt and that fear that controls you and binds you, the perversions that holds you, everything you need to be set free from. Otherwise, you'll be completely dominated. You'll be completely lonely. You'll never be able to fellowship with another person. You're gonna feel completely isolated no matter what you do because you can't know another person because you're false and they're false. Trying to know each other is impossible. You can only understand and be accepted upon um, what you're presenting which is false. So you'll never have any, any real communion with anyone ever in your life. You'll be lonely forever, and this is God's punishment on you. You guys gotta understand. Your loneliness and your emptiness, this is punishment so that you'll turn around. You are actively being punished by God. The wrath of God is on you. So you can keep going further into water and suffocate even further and feel the pressure and the destruction. Or you can ask him to bring you out, and he will. And if he doesn't, then he's not a God worth serving. Because anyone who calls on the name of Jesus Christ will be saved. All right, you guys. Don't let... In religion... Don't let people tell you what to think or speak or feel or don't let them compare you to images. Don't let them tell you that you're not Christian. I mean, who, there's no such thing as a Christian, all right? There's no such thing as what a Christian ought to be. If someone tells you that, then they aren't Christian, just so you know. They might be, they might have a seminary degree, but they're not servants of the Lord. They're servants of that seminary. You guys gotta understand, those in the world, Anyone who would sow wickedness into you has an agenda to control you. Anyone that would want you to do drugs, that would want you to be homosexual, that would want you to be angry all the time, that would want you to hate another person, that would entice you under these things, they are manipulating you for control and you are falling for it. <clears throat> all right, good luck and I hope you break free. Talk to you soon, bye.